The name of this meal was so distressing to the queen, she apparently had to write directly to her chef about it. Thanks to the convenience of modern transport, few of us remember a time when we needed to wait for certain fruits and vegetables to be in season before we could have them. But even though most are available year-round now, there's something to be said for eating foods when they're meant to be harvested. We can imagine this would be the case at the royal summer estate of Balmoral, where plenty of strawberries are said to be found in the gardens when Queen Elizabeth II was in residence. But there was one point when a seasonal strawberry dish led Her Majesty to write a note to the royal kitchen. Royal chef Darren McGrady says Balmoral strawberries were a favorite for the late monarch, particularly when they were in season. In 2017, McGrady told Vanity Fair, the queen would relax by going strawberry picking and come back with a basket of berries for me to prepare in the kitchen. Her treat was to have them served with a chocolate mousse or chocolate ice cream. She is a chocoholic and loves anything with chocolate in it, but the queen was also a creature of habit, and she liked eating the same things all the time. So when a new dish was introduced into the rotation, McGrady says the chefs were asked to provide a recipe, and if the recipe was forgotten, the chefs would get a note, as McGrady did because he had forgotten to explain just what it was he wanted to feed her, the chef shared on YouTube. The offending dish in question, the Scandinavian dessert Tischlerta Bundepiker, which McGrady translates into Veiled Farmer's Daughter. He served the queen a version of the treat made with those in-season strawberries, but he didn't give her the recipe. That's how he came to be in possession of a note asking, what or who are the Veiled Farmer's daughters. Once it was explained, though, the dish was allowed, and McGrady had a handwritten souvenir of the time he accidentally went against Queen Elizabeth's orders. In actuality, handwritten accounts from the Queen weren't uncommon when it came to food. According to Charles Oliver's book, Dinner at Buckingham Palace, one note was sent to the royal kitchen when the Queen spotted an unwanted visitor in her salad. Upon finding a slug in her food, she placed it in a torn-off sheet of her comments book and wrote, I found this in the salad. Could you eat it? Of course, the Queen had a lot of control when it came to her menu selection. Elections. The royal chef would write meal suggestions in a leather book in which Her Majesty would cross out items she wasn't interested in and make requests. According to royal chef Mark Flanagan, the queen also requested that her menus be in French. The tradition of French menus in Windsor Castle began when French became the official language of the court in the 11th century, per cheat sheet. The menu remained this way even when hosting foreign diners. Luckily, the queen herself was fluent in the language. She was fond of perfection when it came to menus, too. In an article for Town & Country, Flanagan noted, if I get an accent wrong or mix up the masculine and feminine on the menus I send up for her approval, she'll let me know. Though many chefs have served the queen, former royal chef Darren McGrady was one who spoke out about the September 8th loss. McGrady said on CNN, It's an incredibly sad day. You know, I'm feeling those sort of pains in my stomach as if I lost a loved one. And McGrady remembered the queen on a personal level for her remarkable sense of humor. I'm just thinking back today to when I first met her, walking the corgis along the river at Balmoral Castle and the corgis chasing me, me running away, the queen just laughing out loud. Later that day, McGrady posted a short but sweet tribute to the Queen on Instagram. It included a photo of a smiling Queen Elizabeth and a caption that read, Rest in peace, Your Majesty. Thank you for letting me cook for you for 11 years. Although the Queen is gone, memories such as these will continue to carry on through those who knew her.